<laughs> so this is what we got going on. This is what we got going on. Baby. Oh, I got some things to say. I got some things to say. Yes, indeed. Pull up a chair. Come on up to my kitchen table, please. Come on up to my kitchen table. Hey guys, thank you so much for clicking on the video. Welcome to Kitchen Table Talk Live with Spiller Boy TV. Listen, I, how many of y'all got these? How many of y'all got these? Now, see, there's some things that I ain't got to go get. I said, oh, this is it? Oh, baby, I got eight of these. I got eight of these with matching tables. High quality. Sturdy. <laughs> Sturdy. These good chairs. Good chairs. You know, I'm a big boy. I don't play around with no cheap chairs. I got good chairs. Got eight of them. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Eight. At ease. So this is where we're at. And I hate to be so crass by laughing because the situation really isn't funny. It really isn't funny, but it's very telling. It's very telling. Okay. I see y'all coming in. Come on in. Come on in. I know it's a late one. It's a late one, but I just got my myself to a point where I wanted to sit down and I said, you know what? I, I think I want to say something. Oh, yeah, baby. This part's plastic. Good old sturdy plastic. This metal, baby. This is metal. Metal. Yes, God. Honey. Built tough, built sturdy, built to last. Built to hold old nice big piece of juicy behind up. No sitting in the sun and the, 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 the plastic gets soft and then it just fall down on the ground. None of that. None of that, honey. I put my money where my mouth was, honey, for some folding chairs that were going to be sturdy and were going to last and stand the test of time and obviously have dual, <laughs> dual versions of what I need them for anyway. But anyhow. So listen, Montgomery, Alabama. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. I'm from Pittsburgh. I tell you all the time, my town is very much a white town. No ifs, no ands, no buts, no getting around it. I'm from a white town, the Steel City. I love my town. I do. I love my town. But I know where I live. I know where I live. I've always heard, and I've not been, I've never been to Mississippi, never been to Mississippi, but I've always heard about Mississippi and how things are in Mississippi and how different it is in Mississippi. Even in 2023, there's some remnant of how things used to be, like in my grandmama's day. OK, so always heard that, you know, naturally, I'm a black male. Can't get around that. I'm proud to be proud black male, dark skin, black male, thick, sturdy, like that chair. That's me. That's me. OK, so I had no crazy people as my parents. What's up, Ricky? No crazy people. Ricky's from, Rick. y'all know Rick Reed is in the chat. Rick Reed is from Pittsburgh as well. He's a black man as well. He's a lighter hue of a black man, but a black man as well. His daddy, I believe, is closer to my complexion. So I know Rick, we've had some conversations in the past. I know Rick knows the stories that I'm talking about and that he lives in the South now but he comes from here. He knows what I'm talking about. 
He knows what I'm talking about. He knows the stories. Okay. Um, this whole situation down there in Montgomery at the riverboat dock, it just for me was very telling. Very telling of what's always been told to me about the the underlying race situation. Like, yeah, things look nice on the surface, but when you really get below the surface, things are as they always were. And that's what I saw. That's what I walked away from the situation. I literally was sitting having lunch um, on yesterday when I actually saw what really was going on. And I watched that video and it made me go through a range of emotions. That's when y'all know y'all get to see me when it's a, it's a range of emotions that I go through. Um, I was angry. I was saddened. Then it just made me feel an angst like, shit, I wanted to be like the little, little black Aquaman because the little black Aquaman, we'll talk about him because that's what they're calling him. Little black Aquaman. I said, y'all a mess. Y'all are a mess. You know, and that's the thing. I think we, as a people, are actually using, we're using humor. We're using humor to keep ourselves calm because we already know what's coming. So we're using humor to keep ourselves calm and act like it's 2023 and that we have some sense. I don't like this, okay? I don't like this because me personally, I'm not a racist type of person. I am a person who genuinely, I love whatever loves on me. I don't care if you are Hispanic, if you are Caucasian, I don't care if you come from French descent. I don't, I don't care where you come from. You can be Middle Eastern, whatever. If you love on me, I'm going to love back on you. But at the at the core of it, I know who I am. I know where I came from. And my guard is always there. I'm always listening. You you know those little text clues? Child, they all they're always there, you know. When you're around people when they get to saying, Yeah, oh the black woman, who even describes people as that anymore? Oh, the white woman, oh the black woman, oh, the, no, we we go to something totally different in 2023. You be like, you know the woman with the with the small waist or or the lady with the the lady with the red car you don't generally go to the race thing and when you do it's a bit telling so like i said the whole situation in montgomery alabama for me i watched it 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 pretty much infuriated me um because it told the story there was a black man there black man and he was he wasn't a young man okay so that was that was the first part he wasn't a young man okay and these people decided to do him they decided to do him and the part that pissed me off is they decided to do him because they thought they could they thought they were at right to just whoop his ass and it wasn't just like it was one person going to go and whoop his ass, you know what I mean? Because it what now, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Because we got lots of views of the the the, the brawl. Because that's what it was. it was, all brawl. They had a whole full out brawl. And they weren't ready. They weren't ready. They weren't ready because this is, we are controlling this. And I'm speaking of this group of people, this specific group of white people. They felt all at rights to lay an old nasty piece of ass whooping on that man because that man told them they could not dock that boat there. Be at work. So two things. You're at work. Customers are always right bullshit and you're lesser than 
You're lesser than. And you old. Go on about your business. You do what we want to do. You left the boat there. So now that causes the problem. And instead of th they they literally really leaped right to violence was the answer. You just gonna go upside his head. Excuse me. You're just gonna literally, and I think that definitely had to do with Montgomery, Alabama. I can't see being in New York City and the conversation be that quick and all of a sudden you're going upside his head. I can't see being in Chocolate City, DC, and y'all down at the wharf and it's a disagreement and you just go upside his head. I, I don't see that. I don't see that in Atlanta, Georgia. Eh, maybe. Maybe. Some parts of Georgia. Probably not Atlanta. But, I mean, really? Just going upside his head. I d mm -mm. But can I see that in Montgomery? Yeah. Savannah, probably. You know, <laughs> shall I go on? Shall I go on? No, not even in Pittsburgh. I mean, and it's a white town, but shall, shall, listen. Sad chain of events, but just went upside his head. And let's be very honest. If you actually watched you watch the film, and I've watched, and I've watched, and I've watched till I got on my own nerves with watching. And then the humor came through, and I knew where we were as a people. When the humor came through, and the memes came through, and the videos, and we were taking hold of the narrative, and we're adding our humor to it to keep us from going off. Trust me, to keep us from going off. Um. One of the biggest things, I always fear a race war. That's the, two things. Two things that I always speak against when I come down here and I click my button onto my social media. Two things that you, because I don't usually do, like I said, I have a feel good channel. I, I usually come in here and clown and do and try to make you laugh. And then I go on about my business. I don't really get into political things too, too much. Nothing too, too heavy. I just clown and going about my way, you know? But two things you can get me going, that gay folks, because I'm part of the LGBTQIA, I definitely take, I got a seat on the rainbow. I have a major seat on the rainbow. Um, LGBT, black LGBTQIA folks and black women, that, oh, we ain't getting along. Oh, we want to fight with each other. You can ruffle my feathers and get me to, to push my button on that because I don't want that. I never want that because that's it's a no win. Okay. It's a no win. And a race war. A race war. A whole civil unrest with race power in it. In my time, I've always feared that because it just, I promise you, I promise you, if it gets going, it ain't going to be nothing nice. It's not going to be anything like what is in the history books. I promise you. If a race war breaks out in 2023, this world is never going to be the same again. It's not going to be anything like what you've been taught in the books when we were children. It's not going to be anything like that. It's going to be all new pages with all new outcome, with all new scenes in the movie, and it ain't going to be nothing nice. It ain't going to be nothing nice. And just this small little snippet showed you the black race does not fear the white race see when things was going down before there was a fear that was there that fear is not there not nothing i mean nothing like when things went down before 
down in the southern states, yeah, they, they still, some of them still have a bit of the fear. You know, they're taught to fear what goes on, you know, in them little backwoods spots. But as a whole, that fear doesn't exist anymore. It's, it's very much, you know how old, old boy threw that hat up in the air? And when it was up, it was up. He didn't take no hit. See, back in the day, first time around, they could have went upside his head and he would have ate it. Oh, God, what, where am I into? Not no more. Hit fight, period. And it got out of hand real quick. Real quick. And that, right, Rick, like Rick said, it's actually the opposite of fear. It's more of a revenge. Yeah, it's like unleashing the beast. Been keeping it at bay. That's what I'm talking about, about these memes and these little jokes and, and the, the, you know, the whole little thing with the chairs and all of that. It's keeping the beast at bay. It's keeping the beast at bay. You know, er everybody's trying to be cool with it. But we ain't shall. Anyway, so like I was saying, the dude who's at work, he he got popped, and then it, it began a little a little back and forth with him. There's a fight, a whole full out fight with the one guy. And let's be honest. He wasn't doing real well in the fight. He wasn't doing real well in the fight. You know, it was kind of like, again, an age, I think, pe played a part in that. You know, it was going. And again, the trigger, you could see the trigger. He was getting ready to get to doing some stuff. You know what I mean? He was getting ready to get him. But initially, he wasn't getting him. He wasn't getting that boy at first, and there's and there is an age difference. I don't even know what the guy's age, but just from looking at it, I could tell he was a dude of a certain age, and that was a younger boy, just an old disrespectful bastard who just went upside his head, and he was getting ready to show him something. He was getting ready to show him something, and then they decided to jump him. See, right then, now, young boy was out of order. But y'all was all the way out of pocket with that. Like, are you kidding? He's 65. See, quit playing with me. Quit playing with me. Because now you're going to make me mad all over again. He ain't even had no business at work. If y'all stop moving the goddamn Social Security line and the number up, his ass wouldn't even been at work. Y'all wouldn't have been able to be fighting with him because he'd have been at home. Oh, no. Quit playing with me. Quit playing with me. Quit playing with me. But then after a minute, and people saw what was going on, it got the popping. And then, and it goes all the way down. This is what I'm telling you about that little fear thing. No. They start moving. The pieces of the puzzle got to moving. And then one of our babies, one of our babies, that is what I'm trying to tell you. Listen, I'm trying to tell you one of our babies jumped off the boat. I said, bitch, what? 16. That baby was 16. No fear. Dove off the boat, swam over to the dock, and pop, 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 pop. What? So times have changed. Things have changed. The way people feel about things have changed. It's the, I don't know about these people who think they want. It ain't what you want. I'm trying to tell you. It is not what you want and if you look at the title of my video chairs up heading chairs up 
and all the rules have gone into the water. All the rules have gone into the water. Everybody knows. You know, I pay attention to the little details that sometimes people don't be paying no attention to. You know how we fight, gay, straight, or otherwise, how we fight. Men don't beat up on women. If there's an issue with women, you know, that's a real, it happens, but it's a real, when women be jumping in the stuff that have to do with men, somebody's going to move her. They're going to remove her or push her to the side or, or push her down. See, you was out of order. You was out of order. So once you get all the way out of order, when you get out of order to the point where one of our babies got to get in the fight, because that's another thing, our babies don't get in the fight. When the adults fight, the adults fight. Our babies don't get in the fight. When you get us into a point where our babies got to get in the fight, we're going to fight. Like, it's going to be a whole throwdown. Like, for real. It's going to be a throwdown. It ain't going to be nothing nice. Ain't going to be nothing nice. 16-year-old jumped off the bed to get in the fight. That lets you know shit was out of hand. Shit was out of hand. Completely out of hand. And truly, keep watching the video, once the baby, when baby boy got over to the dock, the fight, the initial fight was over. The initial fight was over. But yet again, it showed you where we were. It shows you where we were in the situation because it was an unrest in my point in, in my opinion it was an unrest it couldn't be let go at that point because y'all think y'all did something really you thought you did something so now the ass whoopers must commence and then it went it, man woman and child at that point it literally became one race against the other race and all the rules went into the water man woman child beast there was nothing being handed out but ass and elbows you understand me everybody was getting it the women the men, because the women was they was doing they was doing their big one. Oh, they was just a passing licks. I said, mm -hmm. and I knew when I saw women being knocked, pinged, and dinged. I said, oh we, oh we, we there, we there. They was getting tore up. Everybody was getting tore up. Everybody was getting tore up. But what do you want? What do you want? Now, you said he was 65. Do we allow you to hit our elders? Do we allow you to hit our babies? All the rules went in the water. You violated us as a people. We were violated as a people. It was time to roll. And that's what happened. And this was small. Can you imagine this kind of mess everywhere? It ain't what you want. It is not what you want. And this is the thing. It was, this was physical combat. This was physical combat. You don't want to play that other kind of stuff. You don't want to play that other kind of stuff. Go pull some numbers out of Chicago. Go pull some numbers out of New York City. You don't want to play that other stuff. It will not end well on either side. It will not end well on either side. But trust me, 
it will not be no walk through park. It will not be no, oh, this is one for the books. Oh, it's going to be one for the books. But the book's going to be toe up. The book's going to be toe up. It's going to be a terrible, terrible day. This is something I ain't never wanted to see happen. But I mean, when I say it went down, down to the Montgomery, it went down. And then when the chair came in, I, I don't know how the chair ended up being the start. Well, yeah, I did. Because it was just... <laughs> So there was a lot of hits being, you know, a little pop, pop, pop. And the chair was given clack up. Clack. I mean, that chair situation was a mess. A whole mess. A whole mess. And the lady that got hit upside her head with the chair, see, a part of me wanted to say, oh, my God. But there was another part of me that seeing all the videos, she was really carrying. She was carrying the whole time. She was carrying. When the chair got to her, it was like, girl, usually karma is a fat black bald headed bitch, but karma came in the form of a white folded chair, honey. It was time to get a little something. You had done made it for quite a while. <laughs> she had made it a while, but that chair brought her back. I said, girl, they done took this thing. They done lit you up with that chair, honey. Lit her up with that chair. I mean, just that folks get knocked in the wall. It was terrible. It was terrible. Did I like it? No, I ain't like it. I ain't like none of it. But if I sat here and told you that I did, did I feel it was necessary? And I said, no, I'd be lying. It was definitely what I call necessary roughness. Necessary roughness. You went too far. And when you go too far, everybody else go too far. Everybody else go too far. It was bad. So today I'm reading and I see I see the whole thing that right here, Christina. Christina said that lady got hit. Don't see you clown. I thought she got hit for the Florida mother of Emmett Till. You know, child. The floor, you said the Florida mother of four that got shot through the door for that lady that lied on Emmett Till. They child. Okay, listen. And that's that that right there. There, there's so much history. There's so much history. Rosewood, Emmett Till. I mean, we could go on or again. That's why I I don't talk about this stuff. I don't talk about this stuff. But when I say unleashing the beast, that's what I'm talking about. The it go, the situation goes too far. It goes too deep. It has some of the worst and some of the nastiest nuances of anything that I've known since I've been on the planet. Because it goes all, it'll, it literally will go, I mean, once you unleash that beast and then you're saying, okay, now we are at it. Because that's how it goes. That's why, this is why it's not good for children who are related to fight. It's not good. You have, you ain't never realized that generally when family members fight, they fight harder than they fight people in the street. Because it'd be personal. It's personal. My mother, y'all know I got a brother. I have a biological brother and then I have Chet, who I actually call my brother, okay? Who he's, for all purposes, he is my brother. But I have one biological brother. My mom, who is somewhere in the chat right now, she's she's not in the chat, but she's in the room. She's here. Um, my mom, she got two boys. They're three and a half years apart, just like me. I got two boys, three and a half years apart. And my mother did not allow me and my brother to fight with one another. Didn't allow it. 
did not allow it. Period. Period. I'm 51, he's 40 or 48 at this point. We don't do, we don't have any stories of us having hand to hand combat. We don't have none of that. Didn't allow it. We weren't even allowed to argue with each other to a point where it get too loud. We get to argue and then going back and forth, because y'all know how my mouth is. We get to argue and going back and forth. He's not much of a talker. I, I'll, you know, I'll drag you at it. I will, and I always have since I was young, honey, I will cuss your ass all the way out at it. I will drag you. I'll drag you to the point you'll wish that I just hit you and get it over with. We mm -mm, we weren't even allowed to argue to a point where we get to a certain decibel. If it did, if it did, let me tell you about that little Gemini, honey. My mother come through, and everybody's ass is kicked, and then the winner of the fight is Patty. Period. She did not allow it. Period. So it's always very strange for me to see. I see brothers and sisters fighting, but one thing that I've always known and realized when I've seen siblings who do fight and they get into, and I'm not talking just a little argument or nothing like that. I'm talking and, and, and I'm being serious with you all. Siblings who really fight each other, like get out in the street and rumble. If you ever notice, you watch these people, they be fighting their siblings harder than they be fighting people in the street. Harder than they be fighting people in the street. Now, my mother has explained to me why, you know, why her, her stance is that, you know, she actually, when she was younger, she's a younger woman, she actually saw two brothers have a fight and one actually did kill the other one. And that just hit her in a place and it stayed with her. And that's part of her parenting. She just, you know, you, you know, some things just hit you and they stay with you. That hit her and I stayed with her. And her boys weren't we mm -mm. she nip it in the bud. So she ain't never have to live that or relive any parts of that. So that was like a big thing with her. And it stuck. So when I went forward, and I, I would never sit and allow my boys to go at it like that. Mm -mm. It just ain't right. And then, like I said, I've seen other people where I've seen girls who are sisters, they be fighting and stuff. And I haven't seen them do some fighting out in the street. But no, now you fight with your sister. Now you're going to rip all your sister's hair out. But wait a minute. How you gonna rip all your sister's hair out and the bitch around the corner still got a bob? I don't get it. So it's because it's personal. We got so much invested. We got so much time. We got so much history with one another. How could you? How dare you? You know, that that's why it's like that. Yes, Cain and Abel. It's so much history. So with this whole thing about the race war, there's so much history. There's so much terrible nuances to that history that once you unleash it, it just keeps going back, 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 back. And the next thing you know, where you at? Slavery. You have slavery. Now folks is getting ass whoopings that belong to the ancestors. It just goes back too far for it to ever be anything that you can really contain. Once it gets out, once Pandora's box is open, ain't no going back. Ain't no going back. And it really is, how dare you? Look how far we've come. Or look how far you tried to make us seem like we can. It, it, it's going to be all that. It's going to be all those things. And it'll be nasty. It'll be nasty. And it was nasty first time around. It was very nasty. It was very nasty. And a lot of things got by because of fear. Fear. Fear 
held blacks at bay many times. I'm going to say it again for the ones in the back of the cheap seats. Back in the day, way back in the day, fear held black people at bay a lot of times don't exist anymore like that. It really is not, and I, this is, it really is not worth it. It's not going to be any winners. There's not going to be any winners. Are y'all listening? And there's more than just, I don't just have black people in here. You know, I got, I have, everybody listens to me. I've been here a long time. I've been, I've been here a long time. There will be no winners. There will be no winners. So we need to pull it together. And God damn it, I mean pull it together fast. That was a show of how people feel. There are some people who really just feel as though it is their right. It is their right. You are beneath me. Are people always bold enough to say it now? No. But do they feel it? A lot of times they do. A lot of times they do. Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. It's it's really, truly your Pennsylvania privilege to feel however you want to feel about me. But once you share it, it is then my Pennsylvania privilege to make you wear it on your ass. Keep it to yourself. It's not worth it. It really is not worth it. Now, as I was reading through earlier, I see... Of course, the Montgomery, the police have gotten involved and all of that. There have been some warrants put out. And there, of course, they're saying, yes, that the, you already knew that it was going to be legal. We knew it was going to go legal because, again, how dare you step out of line? And that's on both sides. How dare you step out of line? What? He went upside your head, but what did y'all have to do with it? Everything. Everything. Elder. Elder. Elder comes along with lineage. If you get the elder, there's people, how they get to be the elder? Because there's some people up underneath them. You go upside their head, there's a many of his that's going to perk up. It just is what it is. You don't want us slapping your old people around. Don't goddamn slap ours around. Period. So I knew the lawsuits was coming. I knew they were coming. I knew it was going to be the search to get the people and try to lock them up and all that and all of this. And, and, and we already know. You know, the law is what the law is. The law is what the law is. And the law is put in place for honest people. What do you say? <laughs> the law is put in place for honest people. Locks. Locks are not for criminals. Locks are not put on the door for criminals. Locks are put on the door for honest people because a criminal is going to come in anyway. Laws are put in place for people who respect it. People who don't respect the law don't give a shit, okay? They don't give a shit. Locks are put on doors for honest people. You put a lock on the door, somebody wants something out of your house, they'll crawl through your goddamn window if they're crook. It's just the way it is. So I knew it was coming. And I knew that once, and we ain't seen just yet, but if they start really throwing out all these crazy charges and locking folks up too tough. That's how it's going to be. But 
I know the hell you didn't. It's going to be that whole thing. And then it's going to be an uprising. It's going to be an uprising. So I'm just kind of watching now. All we can do is watch and see how we're going to go. How we're going to go. But here's the tea. Now, here's the real tea. The employee, OG, old, old dude, you start suing, he should never want for nothing because he need to sue. If we're doing it like that, that's how we're doing it. We suing and lock the folks up. He needs to sue everybody. Everybody. So some, and I'm sure it'll happen. We need some type of a lawyer that gets things done for him because he needs to sue everybody and everything. Everybody and everything. He don't ever need to go back to work ever again, period. And there should be some money left over where the folks right up under that lineage I was talking about, they shouldn't have to work no more either. That whole little river riverboat situation down there, He shouldn't have to uh, do nothing down there no more. He shouldn't have to do nothing down there no more. He actually should be able to own a piece of it if things go right, if you play your cards right. Because totally out of order. Totally out of order. He down there doing your job, and he has to be viciously attacked. Oh, yes, let's get the verbiage together. He was viciously attacked. He's 65 years old. Looked to me like they was trying to take him out. What type, that type of beating that was being put on him at 65? That was a vicious attack. A vicious attack. A 65 year old could fall down and mess up their hip and be up out of here and be completely up out of here. So what makes you think that a 65 year old need to be laying on the ground being pulverized and stomped out by multiple folks? A gang, if you will. Because they did, they rolled up on them like a gang. A gang. Like a posse. Any more words? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He was viciously attacked. Viciously. He needs to sue everything and everybody. But from what it looks like to me, that first portion of the fight was an issue where I think our people going to have a little issue is how the fight kind of veered down but then it kicked up again and i think that's where the people that actually all were in that part of it are going to have some problems or have some problems but that's okay that's okay that's all right we got some talented people that should be able to 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 help with this situation but i think it's going to get more ugly before it gets better i really do i think this is going to get more ugly you say, what issue, Penelope? Oh, it's going to be an issue because, because of the fact that it kind of stopped. It kind of stopped. Like the fight kind of stopped, and then the fight started back up. So then it just kind of was like, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to see that. I don't want to say too much, but I, I, I just got this sneaking suspicion that they're going to try it. They're going to try it. They're going to try it. The folks like the little boy. Thank God he's 16. He's 16. So he's a minor. He's a minor. So don't try it. Leave him alone. Black Aquaman. Leave him alone. He's 16. He's our baby. Leave him alone. Only one I'm concerned. Yes, the person with the chair. The person with the chair. I fear for the person with the chair. I do. 
I fear for the person with the chair um, because, again, of verbiage. So I ain't going to touch it. I ain't going to touch it. But I fear for that person. Um, and I was kind of wondering about, like, the fact of the memes and, and that kind of thing. Were we, as a people, making it worse? That was my first response. Was like, oh, my God, are, are we making it worse? You know, like, because of the humor. But again, the humor plays a good part because again, I think the whole adding the humor to it is keeping keeping everybody at bay. Keeping everybody at bay and keeping things chill so we can act according and act like we got some sense and just keeping things chill. But I do. I fear for the the chair. I fear for the chair. I fear for the chair. <sighs> yeah, but I think I, again, people are on board. Our people are on board. I hate this whole. Thing. I really do. I hate this whole our people versus their people versus. I hate it. Oh my god, I hate this so much. I hate it so much, but it is reality. It is my reality. It's my reality. I am a black man, period. I'm a black man. And this situation, my those were my people. My people were under attack. So listen, if you feel some kind of way about it, I can't tell you not to. I can't tell you not to. But that's just real life. Real life situations will try to divide us. And when the divide happens, you got to go to the house that you came from. That's just the way it is. You know, maybe I can meet you back in the yard a little bit later. But when the divide happened, I got to go back to the house that I came from. Shit. You know, I don't like it. Let me just tell, I'm just going to throw this out there too. And it's just so silly how I I, I got into a little tete-a-tete, okay, earlier today. And it's just so funny about how people will divide themselves up and try to play victim. And that's, that's I'm like, I don't want to hear with this situation. I don't want to hear none of that victim stuff. Y'all kicked it off down there in Montgomery. You all kicked it off. You kicked it off. It was very race driven. Ain't no ifs, ain't no ands, ain't no buts. He was black. And there wasn't a black friend around that went and jumped on him. It was all white folks that went and jumped on him. So this is very clear cut about what it was. It was, it was very clear cut about what it was, very clear cut, okay? But I had a little tiff right here online earlier with a person who was misusing somebody else that I follow over on Instagram. Now, I ain't paid no attention to none of the race stuff. Like, I didn't bet, because the person who was being attacked, one is LGBTQIA, and that he is, and he's Caucasian, okay? But he is very nice. He's a very nice guy. And he doesn't, he don't do no beefing or none of that kind of stuff. This person, he makes clothes. The person came in, said some real nasty stuff, which wasn't even necessary. Just nasty about something he made, okay? But it went all into, oh, it ain't classy, ain't this. They opened up the line with, you know, with their, their little comment with not so nice. Other people were giving them compliments. And listen, not so nice. And that's fine. Because you are entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. But all of this going on and on about, you know, it would have been this and it would have been that if you did this, that thing, and the other. Okay, all of that is fair. The only part of their comment that bothered me was the not so nice. Because, yeah, it still was nice. 
you didn't care for the styling, but to say it's not so nice and then go and just the the whole it was nasty. And then I looked at it for what it was. And there were some folks that made some comments like, wow, you didn't have to say that. You know what I mean? And the person was getting like real smart with this, with this, with the people and saying that, you know, like they was all, oh, y'all just young and y'all just this and, and y'all just this, that, and the other. And it was like, you know, like everybody's so soft. It's not about being soft. You're being rude. You're being rude. You're being rude to somebody that's not rude. You're trying it. So I'm getting to the point where it all wraps in with this. So I go down and I said, because I look on the per that person's Instagram, and I, yeah, they're talking about uh, the people being young. And I looked at the person, and they are a person of a certain age. Well, now, here we go. I'm a person of a certain age. So I spoke up. Because I think the people that were comment were a little bit younger. So the bitch was trying it. So I took my old ass down and I said, you need to knock it off because you, you're too old to try to pretend like you don't get what they're saying. You know what you said was rude. And after I had looked at their page, child, they were clout chasing. They were clout chasing. They were trying to, you know how that goes. You know how that goes. Clout chasing. So I, I typed it in and I was nice. I didn't cuss them or nothing. I, I was nice. Told him, I said, you need to stop clown chasing and you're too old to be playing this game like you don't realize what you said was rude. And the content creator didn't deserve that. If you didn't like the garment, that's fine. But all that other extra, they didn't deserve that. And then you try to play in the faces of the, the fans. Don't do that. That's rude. The person comes back and starts going on telling me now keep in mind by the time i said something this person done commented and was dragging like six seven different people six seven different people talking about the generation x and all that all this stuff once i said something they come back to me with well i don't i speak spanish what I speak Spanish and you obviously don't understand Spanish and I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't know all of y'all little idiosms. Like I, I was like, what an idiotism? I don't I don't understand that and I don't know what you mean by clout chasing. See, you plan. You plan. You plan. So I went on and I explained what I meant by oh and told me because they didn't clock me for being as old as them okay so I told them um said something something about if I, I am older and one day you'll understand when you're older and I said no I am older sweetie I am older how old are you but I am older Okay, so don't try to do me like I'm no little teenager. And Spanish has nothing to do with anything. You said not respectability, politics, gaslighting you. Trying it, trying it. Yeah, I said, listen, I said, I'm older. Okay, so that's not going to work on me not a teenager and little stuff that you're saying and like i said you too old to be playing the games that you playing and pretending like you don't know what you're doing now we're gonna play i'm spanish spanish what who knew you were spanish because everything here is in english love everything here is in english and i explained very nicely what clout chasing meant i explained it this is what clout chasing means sweetie this is what you're doing you was trying to drive people over to your stuff to see that mess you got on your channel, you know? Um, and that whole thing about Spanish, I didn't like it. And that's why I said, that's why I just brought that whole story to y'all because don't start trying to play victim. Don't start trying to play victim and saying that what you're doing ain't what you're doing and then trying to say that you mean that because Spanish versus english had nothing to do with that situation you were rude and that's what she said to me she said not nice in spanish means not nice i said yeah not nice in english mean not nice too 
So don't try it. Don't try it. And none of what was written was in Spanish. She tried it, Eddie. She tried it. You looked over there and you see my black face and you tried that I'm Spanish role. Girl, don't do me. Don't do me. No, I don't speak Spanish, but I got a whole bunch of folks that do speak Spanish that love my ass and I love theirs. Don't you do me. Don't do me. You knew exactly what you were saying. You was talking good shit in English. Don't go Spanish now, sister. Don't do it. Don't do it. So that's why I told that story. And that literally just happened to me earlier today. So now listen here. I don't want to see none of that down to the Montgomery. I don't want to hear nothing about y'all don't know why people were racially charged. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. You jumped on him and you beat his ass because he was black and you thought you could. That's why you did it. The beginning, the middle, and the end of it was because you felt like he was beneath you and how dare he tell you what to do. And now that you've told me what to do and you're going to enforce it, I'm going to beat your ass because it's my right to do it because I'm better than you. I don't want to hear none of that bull crap. You knew what you were doing. You knew why you did it and you need to pay for it. It's real simple. It's real simple. You've already paid part of the price. You know, you started a fight and you got your ass whooped. And let there be no mistake. You got your ass whooped. <laughs> you got your ass whooped. You know, you were told to have a seat. Then you were showed how to get a seat. You got your ass whooped. And that's enough. But now y'all are, now we're going to lock people up and we're going to do lawsuits and all of that. So there's going to be lawsuits flying on both ends. No one. Now look at said Gabor talking about where's Senorita at. She are, now you know I didn't handle that. I didn't handle that. She, she piped down, child. You know how I did. I didn't even have to cuss her. You know, so I bet you if I get to slinging some of these words that you baby and clean you up, I bet you understand that. And everything was in English. That was the part I thought it was so shady. It was so shady because what you were trying to do is trying to start playing victim. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. You were victimizing a white man who I, I happen to like him. And I said something and you see my black face and then you're going to try to play. We're not playing no race card because this is not about race. This is about right versus wrong, rude versus not rude, unnecessary versus necessary. That's what it was about. Nothing more and nothing less. I wasn't going. I wasn't going. And in this same vein with this stuff down there, Montgomery, we are not going. We are not going. We don't want to hear it. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it was. And we ain't going. We're not going. We are not going. Nope. Period. So just don't try to pull it. Don't try to pull it. Okay. So... I think I've said my piece. I think I've said enough for right now. I don't think we will. Hey, Marina, one time. She's Spanish. No, she actually wasn't. Bad. She she was when I looked at the picture. She really was a Spanish woman. But I ain't. Uh. 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 Not at all. I have friends that are, are Hispanic and they understand. And I understand them. I understand them. I ain't going for it at all. I ain't going for it. You were rude and you were rude in English. 
and she tried to be real cute and throw a um see i'll tell you how people try to do she tried to be cute because on the end of her last comment the whore threw a a, a rainbow on <laughs> she threw a rainbow on the end of the comment i said girl just call me a fan <laughs> i caught it <laughs> She threw a nasty piece of rainbow on the end of her comment. I said, oh, that bitch. <laughs> I caught it. <laughs> so, listen, she understood. She understood the level of battle that we were <laughs> She tried me, honey. <laughs> I was like, that's all right, girl. I'm going to let you slide with that one. <laughs> but don't be rude to Gunner no more. That's, it's Gunner. Gunner Deathridge is um who I'm talking about. That's the, the clothing designer, YouTuber that I was actually standing up for. Because Gunner is very, Gunner ain't getting ready to do no type of arguing or nothing like that. Gunner just do what he do. He get on the sewing machine and do his thing. I seen it and Gunner don't know me from a can of paint, but I didn't appreciate it. And I knew she was full of mess, honey. She sure did throw an old nasty piece of rainbow <laughs> in her last comment. Anyway, all right, y'all. See you again. Laugh, child. You better laugh. You better laugh, honey. I, I had to laugh. I've had to laugh at this whole situation because this really made me feel some type of way. But I'm going to let it go for right now. For right now. I'm going to keep my eyes and my ears open. We will be talking more about this. I am so sure. I am so sure. Um, yeah. I know people were trying to reach out to try to talk to little black Aquaman. Keep in mind, he's only 16. He's only 16. So I don't know how that will go as far as people trying to interview him and things of that nature. He's 16. So that's a slippery slope. He's our baby, period. He's our baby. He can swim. And he could fight. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Okay, and he understood the assignment. <laughs> okay, here I go. I'm gone. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm going. Anyway, anybody who I offended today, I have to say, I'm not sorry that I offended you. It kind of is what it is. We, you know, well, we we got to do better as a whole. But I, I don't, I don't apologize about anything that I've said here today. I'm standing ten toes and ten fingers down in every bit of everything that I said. Period. Period. The whole thing, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It really ain't. Won't be no winners. I'm trying to tell you. Anyway, listen, y'all keep watching. Keep watching. Keep paying attention. There's more to come, I'm sure. I will see y'all on the flip side. Thank you for coming to my kitchen table. Y'all have a good night. And, and, and feel like.